So I'm thankful for uh, Carmen, and she wanted to share and just uh, pour out from her heart what she'd been studying God's Word. And so uh, hopefully you're ta- able to take that uh, to heart and uh, get some good notes out of that. And uh, thank you, Carmen, for, for sharing today. I do want to go to uh, Matthew chapter 11 and just share a quick um, quick little message about Jesus and just our expectations of Jesus and uh, how so- sometimes those just don't line up. Uh, with who Jesus claimed to be. And so, uh, have you ever done something that just didn't meet your expectations before? Maybe there's something in your life that just kind of fell flat and you had high expectations, but it just didn't didn't work out how you, you thought it was going to. Uh, for me, uh, one of my favorite books was going to make it onto the big screen. And so, I was so excited. Uh, I was ready to go see the movie. I got the ticket. Uh, got there early, and there's only a few people in the theater. And when I watched the movie, I realized uh, why uh, why people weren't coming to the movie because it was kind of a terrible movie. And so uh, my expectations of what was going to take place in this movie were so high, but it just didn't work out. I left defeated and uh, <laughs> just not not real happy with how the movie went. But uh, anyway, maybe there was something in your life where uh, things. Uh, happened that just exceeded your expectations. Like one time, my my family decided we were going to go on vacation. And, you know, as a teenager, uh, there's just times where you don't want to spend a whole lot of time with your family. But for me, in high school, I was there uh, going on family vacation. I just wasn't real excited about it. But we went to the Grand Canyon. And when I got to the Grand Canyon, uh, this giant hole in the ground uh, my expectations were just blown away. It was such a beautiful place and being able to experience uh, so many great things there. We made some great memories. And so uh, my expectations were greatly exceeded in that. And uh, I'm looking forward to one day when I get to take my kids to go to the Grand Canyon and, and see what that's like and experience some memories there with them. So what are expectations? Expectations are those kinds of things in our mind that just Uh, help us frame up our perception of what the world or the future should look like, right? So maybe when you go to Chick-fil-A, your expectation is that Chick-fil-A is always going to be great. Or maybe uh, you have these expectations that are going to take place when you graduate one day from school. Or maybe uh, you have these expectations that the earth is always going to remain in orbit and the sun is always going to shine and care for us, right? Maybe you have these expectations in life. These are these are things that we frame up in our mind uh, to help us kind of perceive uh, what is going to take place in the world or in the future for us. So uh, we automatically as Christians begin to place expectations on God, on Jesus, on the Holy Spirit, and how we expect Him to work in our lives. And so we're going to look at that today and what expectations we have that may not necessarily fit uh, who, who God is. So Matthew chapter 11, hopefully you've already turned there and you're ready to read, but in Matthew chapter 11, we see John the Baptist, who was uh, named by Jesus one of the greatest to ever live. John the Baptist was a man who came and he uh, spoke about the Messiah coming. He was the herald, the one who announced to the world that the Messiah was coming. And so um, John the Baptist was a great man. He, he told people that Jesus was coming. In fact, he's the one who baptized Jesus hence his name. And so uh, John the Baptist was, was a great person. And uh, when, when John the Baptist was, was proclaiming the, the fact that Jesus was coming, the Messiah was coming, um, he was placed in prison for what he was proclaiming. And so when he was in prison, uh, I imagine during that time, he began to wonder, what, what is Jesus planning to do? What is the Messiah doing in the world and why is his situation being in prison the way it is when the Messiah is out there uh, doing the things that the Messiah is going to do? So he begins to wonder and to question. Maybe there's some doubt. Maybe there's just some uncertainty and he really wants to know. But he sends his disciples. John sends his own disciples to Jesus to go ask the question, are you uh, really the Messiah? Is there someone else that we should be Uh, expecting to come. And so that's what takes place. He sends out his own disciples to ask this question of Jesus, and we might might be surprised at Jesus' answer. So let's read Matthew chapter 11, uh, starting in verse 1. It says, 
After Jesus had finished instructing his 12 disciples, he went from there to teach and preach in the towns of Galilee. In verse 2, when John, who was in prison, heard about the deeds of the Messiah, he sent his disciples to ask him, Are you the one? Who is to come, or should we expect someone else? In some in some translations, it says, "Are you the expected one?" So John has some sort of expectations that he's already placed on the Messiah that uh, he he's expecting him to live out certain things, to do certain things when he comes. We know from history that uh, the that the people during that time expected the Messiah to come as a mighty warrior, as someone who is going to, to, to take back Israel, is going to take back the promised land, was going to return the people back to a physical, geographical uh, place that, that God had claimed before. So they, they, they expect the Messiah to come and to save them from their situation rather than to save them from their sin and from death. And so they had these expectations, and maybe John was starting to fall into that. He wasn't really uh, sure about what Jesus was coming to do. And so he sends his disciples to ask Jesus that very question, are you the expected one, or should we expect someone else to come and be the one to save us? So John's asking this question from prison, probably because he's wondering, why is he standing in prison, wasting away while the Messiah is out there? The one he's been proclaiming was going to come is out there doing his work, doing his ministry. So verse 4, he says this, Jesus replied, go back and report to John what you hear and see. The blind are receiving sight, the lame walk, those who have leprosy are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, and the good news is proclaimed to the poor. Blessed is anyone who does not stumble on account of me. So Jesus tells them to go back and to report to John these things that are taking place, that they're seeing, that they're hearing, that they're witnessing uh, Jesus do. So some of those things are the blind are receiving sight, right? We read that in Scripture. Jesus uh, healed blind people. Uh, The lame are walking. Jesus did that in Scripture. Uh, The lepers are cleansed. Jesus did that in Scripture. The deaf are able to hear. We read about Jesus doing that in Scripture. And the dead are raised. Again, Jesus did that in Scripture. And the good news is being proclaimed. These are great things that are taking place uh, in the life of Jesus. And so if we take those things that Jesus mentioned and we go to Isaiah chapter 35, we'll see that there's some things that uh, the the Messiah is claimed to be able to do Uh, by the prophet Isaiah. And so it says this, Then the eyes of the blind will be open, and the ears of the deaf unstopped. This is uh, Isaiah 35, 5 through 6. And then the lame will leap like deer, and the mute tongue will shout for joy. Water will gush forth in the wilderness and streams in the desert. There's some things there that match up with what Jesus was proclaiming to John the Baptist and his disciples. If we go to Isaiah chapter 61, verse 1, it says, The Spirit of the Sovereign Lord is on me, because the Lord has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. Those words are right there, exactly what Jesus shared with John the Baptist, John the Baptist's disciples. It says, He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim freedom for the captives, and release from darkness for the prisoners. See here, Jesus is reminding John that he is the Messiah, that he is matching everything that the Messiah was sent to do. But for us here in 2020, on the back end of all that Jesus did, we we know that Jesus came not to save the people from a physical place, from a physical kingdom, but to save them from sin and death. We know this to be true. But the people during that time, maybe they were missing that point somehow. They had these expectations of what Jesus was going to do for them. That he was going to save them from an earthly kingdom. He was going to save them and return them back to an earthly kingdom that God was going to be in charge of. That's not what he came to do. That's not what Jesus came to save humanity from. And so when we see this taking place, 
uh, there's some expectations that are being crushed right there for the people in Israel during that time. Uh, his purpose was not to meet the immediate needs of every person, including the most obedient, John, John the Baptist. He, he did meet needs of people during that time to show his power, but he didn't come to meet the immediate needs of every person, to feed every mouth, to heal every scratch and bruise. Right? He didn't come to do those things. In fact, Jesus' ultimate purpose, what he really came to do, was to meet the eternal need of redemption for each one of us. That's what Jesus came to do, and I'm thankful for that. I'm thankful that he took care of that need before any other need. So it's easy for us as well during this time to start placing expectations on Jesus of what he's going to do for us or through us or in our life it doesn't necessarily match up with Jesus' ultimate purpose, which was to save humanity, to redeem us, to become our Savior. So what expectations do you have of Jesus that might miss that vision of Jesus' ultimate purpose as a Messiah, as a Savior of the world? And really, at the end of the day, what's most important, what's most important beyond anything else is the fact that the gospel is being proclaimed. The gospel was accomplished. The gospel was made possible by what Jesus did. Not getting sidetracked by every person's little expectations, but remaining true and focused and faithful to God's ultimate expectation to save his creation. It's become the redeemer of those who are lost. Jesus, he stuck he stuck with that plan. He stuck with that truth. And that is a great thing for us today. So what matters at the end of the day is the gospel. The gospel is what matters at the end of the day. The gospel is true despite our circumstances in life. John the Baptist stuck in prison, wasting away just because he was in that situation, because his life uh, was soon to be ended, didn't mean the gospel was not true. Didn't mean the gospel failed. In fact, the gospel saved John the Baptist beyond what he experienced in his life. And the gospel is made certain because of the fact that Jesus is the Messiah. And he proved that over and over through his power and what he was willing to do and how it was proclaimed 700 years before by Isaiah the prophet. And so what expectations do you have of Jesus that may not line up with the truth of the gospel? What expectations are you placing on Jesus that when they're not fulfilled will just bring disappointment for you? Are those expectations that we can push aside? I have those in my life as well. If you could push those things away and focus on the ultimate purpose that Jesus came to save us, then you can live out a life and purpose that is focused on what God has called you to. And your life can look more like Jesus and follow Jesus and trust in Jesus in every facet of your life. I love you guys, and I miss you so much. Let me pray for us. God, we love you, and we thank you for all that you do and all the ways that you provide for us. And God, we just thank you that Jesus came to become our Savior. And God, I pray that you would reveal to us the expectations that we have in our own hearts and minds that are not true and not consistent with the ultimate purpose that Jesus has come. And God, help us to push those things away and to remain focused on what is true and right about the gospel. And God, that we proclaim the gospel everywhere that we go. We love you. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.